Your whole arm look. All arm all arm up. Your whole arm look. Yeah, me. Your arms. Your whole arm look. My carry and trios. Your whole arm and I. Your whole arm look. Curios trios panta great out. Curios trios pistols. El de et Jehovah, el emuna Jehovah. Vivas leon curios, otios, o panta creta. Bas leos, bas leon, kai curios, curios. Jehovah da bar halal, Elohim da bar halal. Jehovah Elohim, gadol, gadol, gebra. El Elohim Israel, Jesus Christos. Ton Christon is on Ton Kurion. Kurion in Hagion Panta Creta, Gadol Gadol, Gibber. Ehoa Ishmal Khan, Ehoa Shamma. Yelma Kum Yehoa, Yelma Kum Yapa. Natsak Israel La Shaker, Gava Gava. Triembos Yehoa. Jesus Christos, Panta Creta, Gadol Gadol, Geber. Mora Rosh Nasa, Elohim Elohim, Ileila Eshalut, Yehovah Malak, Yehovah Malak, Olam Olam Ad, Yehovah Elohino, Yehovah Ekad, Gadol Gadol, Geber. Zaan Logan Ogar Tautios, Dolas, Desmios, Despotes, Dikaesune, and Jesus Christos. Kurion, Kurion, Kurion. Hagion, Hagion, Hagion. Numa, Pantacreta, Gadol, Gadol, Gebura. Yehova Ihe Elohim, Yehova Ihe Elohim. Ile Lae Shalut, Jesus Christos. Jehovah Malak, Gadol Gadol, Gebra. Direk Emunabakar, Mishfat, Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh Elelion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, for training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great. Unique, infallible, and ignorant, great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkenu, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling entering ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. To realize and to understand the great and many things which have been recorded and kept for us in the Bible, so that we shall not let go even a single iota or carrera, but rather erecting the structure of Bible doctrine. So that, as Revelation chapter 22 in verse number 19 we read, If you neglect or if you don't erect the structure pertaining to the Lord's mind from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 to be reflected in you, then God the Father is going to remove the things which you shall have in the heaven. If you add anything apart from the word of Lord God to these things, he said, he is going to add into you the plagues of this book mentioned. So, dear brethren, let's come back to learn the word of Lord God accurately 
As such, which God the Father has seemed fit and given for us this infallible and inerrant word of Lord God, to cherish, to realize, and to nourish in the Lord's mind accurately, to be made known and to be taught every day in the power of Lord God the Holy Ghost in this great and unique dispensation of the Church Age. So, dear brethren, use the powers of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound. And let's come back and continue what Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date in it with past, to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. We shall continue after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale of wonders of His Word. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, once again coming into the grace of the Lord to learn the truth, we don't reserve anything on this earth, O Lord, apart from your grace which are bestowed upon us. As Hebrews chapter 12, verse 27 and following emphasizes for us, the fear of godly reverence, that which could be absolutely acceptable in the sight of the Lord, for that cause give us this grace to learn your word, because, Father, you are a consuming fire. So, Father, as we consider the things which are given for us on today's date, in every past, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten, to challenge, and to bless us by this message. In Christ, and we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. In order to avoid trouble and sorrow in your life to be followed, as Psalm 116, verse 3 and 4, or 3 through 4 emphasizes, it reflects back to Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, where with the trouble he has, he has gone through the cross, the sorrow for the three days in the Shoel called to be the Hades for us. And there he goes to set the captivities captive free. And he knows those three, three hours of the things which he has spent on the cross are nothing in compared to the three days of experience what is gone through the process of Shoel in the Hades. The same thing what he has said, and now coming out from that, he gives and distributes for each and every believer the bona fide gift, the gift wherewith we can grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, and we can conform to the image of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because trouble and sorrow is very, very pathetic for every human being on this earth. In Ephesians chapter 4, if we can look, he says, over here in verse number 8 and following, emphasizing the point that, Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it? But that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up for above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And then he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists and some pastor teachers the copulative conjunction chi for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the son of god unto a teleos man perfect man and unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ not according to any other stature but according to the stature stature meant to say the things pertaining to the time of life or maturity of life or the height and the comeliness of the structure. So he says, till we all come to the stature of the fullness, again the pleroma of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Therefore he says, till all could come unto a perfect man. The word telelios, what we read over here, is the same in the Hebrew meant to say first shalom, which is nothing but to be complete. That is by a thought process as a disciple, you can make it up in your blood. And then he would say the very second thing for this, it is called to be tamiyamim, that meant to say complete. How are you going to be complete? having authority upon your blood. So you have used maximum of your blood to the knowledge of Bible doctrine to grow up. So he says, till all could come to the unity of the faith of the knowledge of the Son of God. Unity, ekad, again the word what we say, to build up a wall of fortification in such a manner that you're going to get every thought into captivity for Christ. Ekad of faith, again the word pistis, followed by epinosis knowledge of the Son of God. Not just gnosis, but epinosis knowledge. And then furthermore he says, why you, why you require that epinosis knowledge? He says, unto a perfect man, telilias, followed by the word anthropos. So he says, again, 
again into the measure there is a rule and what is that measure over here what he emphasizes he says that metron or an instrument or a process where we have to reach that so here he says the measurement what is nothing but your brethren which God the Father makes upon your blood to get every thought into captivity for Christ that's the only measure and then are we going to get that he would say like the things pertaining to as an instrument wherewith the Aleph energy of your life when you open up with all of your spirit heart soul and mind it has to be nothing but to represent that you have bought every thought into captivity for Christ so that's the metron that's the measure the measure is first of all first of all getting every thought into captivity for Christ because your blood is been given for that reason and then he would say whenever you open up your mouth in all of the Aleph energy it has to be associated with Bible doctrine so dear brother and these are the both things which he emphasizes as metron so make sure that when you're having blood in your body that he has to get to the to the confirmation of the image of Christ by getting every thought into captivity for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so he says unto the measure and what measure to the stator the word called to be in the Greek helikia that is a suitable age for anything you know man has to reach this age of maturity in Christ not to be still babes because the one who is babe he says in Hebrews 5 12 he is not able to handle the right word of God and these are not worthy he says because these people cannot handle accurately the word of God but what you have to be looking upon the time you should be communicators of Bible doctrine so that the people who have been the things pertaining to waiting upon for the creation of the manifestation of the adult sons they should learn solid adult food so the suitable age the suitable age like Christ being formed in you the suitable age that each and every believer should reflect Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and that suitable age all the time demands in each and every believer to learn completely the word of God if not trouble and sorrow will be upon you and that's a great problem trouble all the days of this life sorrow after your death into the lake of fire this is what we find over here in Psalm 116 dear brethren in verse number 3 he says over here though the psalmist is writing this is good to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ what he has gone through on the cross the sorrows of death compassed me and the pains of the hell got hold upon me I found trouble and sorrow the word sorrow which has been called nothing but pressure upon your head and then he says sorrow sorrow is nothing but your brethren yagon yagon is nothing but your brethren wherewith your hand is not able to again lift up and rise up for the things pertaining to Christ because when once you end that's what we find you know death is the end of all human affairs on this earth when one you have end on this life your life your breathing or whatever you find that is called to be death he says you cannot go to erect again the structure of Christ so that sorrow you are gone and your body is not able to write the word of Lord God your body is not able to become the disciple of the will of Lord God so before that trouble and sorrow could take you up wake up for the purpose what Lord God the Father has kept you alive on this earth Therefore, before it meant to say, when he ascended up, it meant to say, first he went to the lower parts of the earth. And what did he do? He comes up now to distribute for each and every one the spiritual gifts. For pastor, teachers, and evangelism, what we have now after the completion of the canon of scripture. And he gives the work for, for the perfecting of the saints. The word perfecting over here is nothing but catharismos. And over here, catharismos, what are going to look, dear brethren, it is nothing but making you all to reach the complete stage of your growth. It is not just the beginning of the journey. Those are the two words what we find. Catharismos. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12, again we find in verse 23 also. Catarismon. So here he says that you're going to reach your journey, the process of reaching your journey. You reach your goal. So that's the perfection of the saints. Therefore, dear brethren, he emphasizes the word teaching again that perfecting of the saints, catarismos of the saints. So that you have to reach from point A to point B, the perfect goal given for you. So in this catarismos process, he emphasizes again for us to say, each and every believer has to grow up to such levels of standards, wherewith if he doesn't reach or if he doesn't go on to equip himself, 
Then the spiritual gifts what Christ the Lord of God has seen to give you for his three days of experience of sorrow. You know, as usual, as I said, he comes out the third day again into resurrection. And people will be happy to celebrate Christmas, but they're, not able, but they're not able to really be happy to know or to understand the purpose of what is the resurrection day of my Lord God coming out from the three days of that shoal. Because he knows that is a great agony of a pain. Many souls departing without knowing the true salvation of Christ because the shoal is not been prepared for human beings. It has been prepared for angel and the realm of Satan, the angels which have rebelled against God, one third part, and the Satan who has been the head of them. It is not for human beings. That's what Christ the Lord of God says. It is not prepared for you. That meant to say what you cannot be there. Then how are you ending up your life to be there? By rejecting Christ. You know, by rejecting Christ, first of all, you're trying to find out solutions for your salvation. And as believers, by rejecting Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you're trying to find out stupid things as the word of Lord God in Hosea chapter 8 in verse number 13 and 14 emphasizes, first with verse number 12, he says that, I have written unto you great many things of my word of God, of the law, but they have been counted like a strange thing, but have encountered them as a strange thing, the Hebrew word Zor. What is the meaning of that? You haven't gone to dig and take the word of Lord God to renovate your thinking as per the standards of Bible doctrine. So he says you have counted them as a very, very strange thing. You count them as a very, very strange thing. So dear brethren, he further emphasizes over here, they sacrifice flesh for the sacrifices of my offerings. That meant to say what? The things pertaining to the flesh, if they would come and give, that's enough. But they don't want to look upon the real sacrifice which they have to give. It is not your uh, uh, thing pertaining to your money, but your real time given for Lord God to be dedicated unto him. They sacrifice flesh for the sacrifice of my offerings, and they eat up, but the Lord accepted them not. What I have called you to give your life as a living sacrifice by learning the word of Lord God, that which is good, perfect, and acceptable of God, that you are not able to give, and you think you can give your physical sacrifices like your animals, or in present scenario, your money. He says, it's not acceptable to me. And he says, now will he remember the iniquity? And visit their sins because what has been demanded, you're not able to do that. The iniquity, what you're able to look, he emphasizes distorted thinking that is happening. And he visits their sins and they shall return to Egypt. That is what, again, the word having pressure upon your head. And what is that visiting? He says, Pakot. That is, whenever they open up their mouth from the rising of the sun till to the going of the sun, their every thought is not brought into captivity for Christ. So when it's not been brought into captivity for Christ, he says, I go to visit. What he goes to visit? Their sin, the wall of fortification, what they are built up. That's what he says, I go to visit their sins. Because you haven't digged and taken the marvelous wonders of his word. He says, the 10,000 rib reob, what we read the word. Many, many great and deep things what we have from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, which has to be taught dogmatically, emphatically and categorically day by day in the standards of isagogic categories and exegesis of the word of Lord God with proper dispensing technique of dispensations. That has to be taught. But you have considered them to be like a strange things, like an alien, Zor. Why it becomes alien? Why many of the things in the Bible they haven't been told for you? Because you don't go for exegesis. When the word of Lord God said, even in Luke chapter 6, in verse number 3, when Christ the Lord of God claims to them, to them saying that, haven't you seen what David has done there? Haven't you read that? The word read is anagonisco, which is nothing but to analyze and exegete the passages. He says, haven't you, haven't you read them? Haven't you known them? And they're not able to realize that. And what they're able to do every time? They're able to build up lies. Without exegesis, you consider the word of Lord God as an alien thing. If you would really test and look and see what is the word of Lord God, you would not find any pleasure in this, in, in this earth, anything apart from the word. 
You may think you go and enjoy a big beauty or you may go and enjoy big uh, nature. All things will be absolutely faded off because there can be no beautiful thing than the word of God that a human being can ever survive or can ever look. Therefore, we find this passage in Deuteronomy chapter 13. He says over here in verse number 3, which has to be pricked by many people. He says, You shall not hearken unto the words of the prophet or the dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul. You know who is this person? He says that he has told of sign or a wonder it came to pass. What he has spoken. And now he says, because he has spoken, he says, come, let's go and serve other gods. That means what he has spoken as a prophet, it came to pass now. So he says, come, let us go and serve other gods. But what does he say now? So he says, withdraw from Yehovah Elohim. You know, these are the strange things. They're saying you to come and worship strange things. The pulpits where they haven't given time to look into the standards of Bible doctrine, as we're able to read from Jeremiah chapter 14, in verse number 20, those pulpits are disgracing the honor of God or the throne of God. What is the disgrace when there is no proper emphasis for exegesis or in simple words, discipleship program growing up into grammatias as Matthew 13, 52 is all about being preaching about. Such is the kingdom of God. If they don't give that proper of teaching, he says it's a disgrace. You're disgraced the throne of God. And here he says the same word. When you fail to dig and take the word of Lord God and train them up according to the will of Lord God, he says, you are already disgraced my words. My words have been disgraced in you. You know, what a strange thing it is for us to look. He emphasizes again and again, when a prophet has told the word, it came to pass, that meant to say as a sign or a wonder, and now that prophet is taking you out from serving your Hawaii Elohim. You know, people would say, we tell it come to pass, and therefore we shall do, and we are serving your Hawaii Elohim. You know why you are not serving your Hawaii Elohim? You are serving only with him lips, and not with your pure heart. If you are serving him with a pure heart, you would go for exegesis. You would go for isagogics, you would go for catechism, you would go for dispensing technique of dispensations. You would come back and teach rightly to rightly divide the word of truth. You would simply come back and tell that. You would train them up in the standards of word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, iota upon iota, and carrier upon carrier. You will not have anything else apart from that. You would simply lead them in the standards of the Lord's mind. And if you're not doing that, if you're not going for Anaginis code to analyze and execute the passages, he says that you have made their hearts to take him away from your Hawaii Elohim. So he says, don't go. And today you should look upon the present Christendom up to what extent they have counted the great deep things of Bible doctrine to be as a strange things. And now in spite of coming and giving to look upon their body to be as a living sacrifice to Lord God the Father and to renovate their thinking to the standards of the Lord's mind, they think instead of flesh we will come to give flesh and that's acceptable to God. He says, no, it's not at all acceptable to me. Hosea chapter 18 verse number 13. Then what is acceptable? The great deep things of Bible doctrine, what we have over here for us, that's what is acceptable for us. The great deep wonders of the word of Lord God, that's what is acceptable for us. So dear brethren, he says, Be careful if those things have been taught. And it has come to pass. And afterwards, if they're saying you, come, let's go and serve other gods. You know, other gods are nothing but without exegesis. Even if you serve Christ, our Lord, of God, as a minister for you to be in the pulpit, without exegesis, without isagogues and categories, without proper dispensing technique of dispensations, if you would serve the Lord God without having that proper fear of Lord God, it is as good as you're serving other gods. So what is that, that which is right and good? He says, exegesis, John 1, 18, that is the order of the pulpit. Every time you come, you need to look, what is the order in the pulpit? Exegesis. So dear brethren, here he says, you shall not hearken unto the words of the prophet or to the dreamer of the dreams. For the Lord God wants to prove you the word Nasa. He wants to look upon by putting pressure, pressure, pressure upon your vigor and valor of your life. 
You want to simply prove you what you are. You want to simply test you what you are. And there could be no strange things than this on this earth. Because people do not even realize what it is. When Lord God the Father is putting pressure upon you, you need to come back and look and realize the way that we are going is not beautiful. The way that we have been led is not beautiful. Because being taught by the Lord of God, He says, you will have joy, you will have peace. If you have been taught by the Lord of God, this is what it would be for us. Because in each and everything, whenever He emphasizes, He knows that he is going to give joy for that great scenario of the Lord's mind which has been given for us in this church age. Because in each and everything being taught by the Lord of God, He emphasizes nothing but great joy. In the same passage, if you can look in Isaiah chapter 55, in verse number 11, He says, first of all, being taught by the Lord of God, his word shall be established forever. And I will look, for you shall go out with joy. And when I've been put into pressures, when I put into diverse pressures, having no joy, having no emphasis of truth, and it meant to say what they haven't been taught by the Lord God. But being taught by the Lord God, what it happens, he says, the word which he has sent, it will accomplish the purpose and it shall prosper. And now he says, you shall go out with joy. And then he further says, and be led forth with peace. You know, this is what people are not able to realize. Being taught by the Lord of God what they have. He says, they will have nothing but peace. You know, that's what people are not able to realize. When the word of Lord God says, emphasizing the point, what it will be, he says, being taught by the Lord of God, they will have peace. And because that's what God the Father has made with them. In Isaiah chapter 54, if we can look in the previous chapter, what we read, he says, in verse number 13, all and all the children shall be taught of the Lord God, and great shall be the peace of thy children. And in righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. You know, this is the result of the right biblical teaching in your life. Being taught by the Lord our God, what do you have? You have great peace, dear brethren. Anyone who have been taught by the accurate exegesis and isocox and categories, first of all, you will not have any fear. Any calamities, any disasters, any things, you will not at all have any fear to fear on this earth. You will laugh at those fears. There will be nothing for you all to be worried because you will simply laugh at those fears. Because the logic is very, very simple. You laugh. And there is nothing of a fear that you can absolutely have fear. He says you will laugh at those calamities. Because if Lord God be us, if, if Lord God be for us, then who can be against us? How could Lord God the Father be with you when you have been taught? Again, the word taught is called to be lamad, which is equivalent to Greek words, Matano plus Ridasco. Like a discipleship program being taught in our pulpits. And you people are not able to have that joy today. When Lord God the Father is able to test you, the word prove, what we find in Hebrews, in, Daniel, in Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse number 3, he meant to say he's examining you by putting pressure. And whenever you get pressure, you think. You haven't been taught the word of God accurately by so-called pastor teachers. Because there is nothing on this earth that could be far greater than the word of Lord God to be the only solution for any trials in life. Anything it might be. The only thing that which is great for us is the word of God. Word of God alone is enough. That's what he writes in 1 John. Though we might have tasted him, though we might have seen him, more than that we have the sure word of prophecy, which is called to be the word of God, the infallible and ignorant word of God. That's enough, he says. Therefore, he says, though the heaven and the earth will vanish off, his word abideth forever and forever. That's enough, he says. 
We have such a great word of life in this earth. And none will have this word. Like the way how Lord God the Father revealed themselves to the people of Jacob. And now through them for the entire world called the church. The greatest asset that any man can have is to have the heritage of Bible doctrine to his inheritance. What could be any heritage for a man? Bible doctrine. The word of Lord God is the only inheritance for us. Apart from that, there could be nothing on this earth that could be called to be as an inheritance for us. Only the Lord's mind, only the word of Lord God should be our inheritance. When you have the word of Lord God, as we read in Exodus chapter 15, in verse number 26, when you have been able to fulfill what has been given for you, the, the, the things pertaining to the word of Lord God, he says, none of the sicknesses shall come upon you. None, not even a single one. None of the sicknesses shall come upon you. We have such a great thing for us. None of the sicknesses. None of the sicknesses, he mentions. Not even a single thing. You know what a fools we are really to understand. In spite of knowing and realizing the Lord's mind, you people are so stupid and so fools that you're not able to realize what exactly is the thought process what we have in the word of Lord God. And rather than having as a inheritance the word of Lord God, going and possessing them, they're possessing the vanities of this world. And these vanities are absolute vanities for you, dear brethren, whether you believe it or not. And what are these vanities to the core? Your boy crazy, girl crazy stuff. The stuff of your lustful pattern of the old sin nature. Instead of becoming Lama or being taught by the Lord of a God, you think your solutions in other things. But Lord God proves you. Why does he put your pressure? You want to say upon to look and realize that when you have the word of Lord God, nothing is required for you. That's why we have been given in this church age the prayer of Baltimore privileges. What is the prayer of Baltimore privileges? The completed can of scripture at one hand. Again, second, what you have? You have the completed, given the indwelling entering ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit indwelling in you from the day you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ till the day you die. You have been given something vast in this church age, which your brain cannot go to compromise or cannot go to analyze or cannot go to look or realize what it is. You have been given something of a great things in the world of Lord God, which the people longed for it. You have something great, you have something unique, you have something superb. The great men in the past, they wanted to look the completed canon of scripture, we have been given that. You know, you may think, what are you going to do on this earth? <laughs> All the days of your life, if you're going to live for 120 years, even those 120 years are nothing for you to complete the word of God. We bet and we challenge you, even those 120 years will not be enough to complete even to say one book called as Isaiah. You have so much of study to be done there. So much of great vast things to be written there. Even in the book of Jeremiah, if you can look, being appointed by God, the teachings of him, if you can look upon the mindset of the prophets, or if you can look back upon the standards of the Deuteronomy, or the things pertaining to Pentateuch, in each and everything, even the simple epistles, or the simple letters, simple poems, they have so many vast things to teach. That's why we find the simple testament in John chapter 21, when he said, the things what he has done, and if you have been able to write it down, if every human being was a scribe, and every pen was a scribe and the then the sky or the earth is like a roll of a paper he said even those things cannot be able to fit that means there are so many great things for us to learn in the bible but you're so fools you have let going that for stupid stuff on this earth you know people are in search of uh, stars going out at the cost of moon or the sun which are Sun could be only one, moon could be only one, stars are many, people are searching stars. At the cost of losing out the sun or the moon. Bible doctrine is the sun. Go and take the sun. It has many, many things for you to reveal. It is the light. The moon and the stars are given for you for the lesser lights to be shining on the earth. 
The greater light is the sun, which goes to differentiate between the light and darkness. So look into the sun. Sun is the word of God. Be the sun. When we look upon that Isaiah chapter 26, in verse number 2, you will realize, when he says, the song which has been sung, because in Isaiah 25 we have a great victory. In Isaiah 24 we have the process of victory. Coming to Isaiah 26, he says now, In that day shall the song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will, will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. And I will say, Open you the gates that the righteous nation, which keepeth the truth, may enter in. Which nation? The righteous nation. Who? Why? Because they're going to keep up the word Shamer to God. What the Shamer? They guard the truth. And the people who are guarding the truth, they will enter into it. This is very, very simple. And now he says in verse 3 and 4, You will keep him in perfect peace, and then whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. And then he says, Trust you in the Lord Jehovah, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. The Hebrew is very, very important over here when he says, You will keep him. You know, this word is not as the thing, the same way how it has been translated to be in the English, because in the Hebrew, we have something of a great thought over here, emphasizing that, when he begins the word in Isaiah chapter 26, in verse number 3, he says that, Tusar Samak. You know the meaning of the word Tusar meant to say when you're having pressure upon your head. So, the word being supported, that's what he says, thou will keep him in perfect peace. You know, thou will keep him. The word for meant to say what tusar, where you're going to have lot of pressure upon your head. And what does he want? He wants you to be supported. How are you going to be supported? He rises up pressures in your life so that your blood should claim and say, I need to completely learn the word of God, not just to be as a disciple, but I will grow up into grammatias. Being a grammatias is the one who writes a copy of the law of the word of Lord God. People should realize and wake up to the point. It is not just reading. Reading doesn't make so much of difference. It's writing. Christ, the Lord of God, right from the beginning he emphasizes writing even in the book of Deuteronomy if you can look even in the book of Leviticus if you can look he says the word scribes so fares what is the reason of that the one who is going to be a king he should go to write a copy of the law of the Lord of a God because he knows the importance of going and analyzing the Lord's mind in this in this procedure because when you go to sit and write the word of Lord God you will look and really analyze many many things in that so he says thou will keep him. That's not the point. He says over here, from the Tusar, the word form, one being supported. The Hebrew begins with the word having man pressure upon his head. So how, is, how, how does he find the solutions? He says human solutions are not at all worthy. So what will be the solutions? For those pressures which you're getting, your blood should say now the only solution is the word of God. All of the solutions will vanish off. But the only solution for us is the word of Lord God. And that only solution will stand and abide forever. So he says no matter what or maybe the pressure, he says my blood should go back and grow up into grammatias joining as disciples with the Lord God. That's what Christ the Lord of God said in Matthew 23 verse number 30 for emphasizing I will send after my own heart the standards of pertaining to be the scribes the standards of pertaining to be the wise man the standards of pertaining to be the prophetic word you know you know he says in the same thing in Matthew 13 52 emphasizing such is the kingdom of God where this people will be associated to the standards of what we can call in simple terms saying that joining as disciples growing up into grammatias when they're able to become a righteous nation which is able to keep and sing he says the people who are going to keep and sing that nothing but the truth so the righteous nation which shall enter he says that they keep the truth therefore when they keep the truth he emphasizes that you will keep him in perfect peace because your form no matter what may be the pressure you have been supported and how he says you shall be preserved how we shall be preserved no matter what may be the pressure in a vigor and valor he says your head will be kept in absolute peace why peace because your thought process is like a discipleship program in your blood any believer who has a thought process like a discipleship program in his blood, he has absolute peace. Therefore, your time is very precious, dear brethren. Don't let him go for each and every wind that comes in the slight of doctrine, as he says in Ephesians chapter 4, tossing to and fro. But rather, what you have to be now, come back to the unity of the knowledge or epinosis knowledge of the faith in the Son of God. Let's grow up to such extent. You know, people are not preaching today the word of God in the pulpits. 
people are preaching their own interpretations people are preaching their own oratory style of thinking they're not able to preach and teach the lord's mind accurately people are not at all happy to teach that because they don't know what is it and why they're not able to learn because they're not able to realize what is the will of lord god the father in going and making such a righteous nation to be that they have guarded the truth you know many nations tomorrow if we can look in the judgment seat of christ will be condemned like queen of sheba the way how she came all the way from there to look and learn upon the wisdom of solomon and she says what i've heard was only half but when i come over i have so many things and she goes to give a detailed manner of examinations of the doubts what she has in her mind and the hebrew word over there for kea 2425 emphasizes from 2416 what she has been there from there she comes to sagnant part of 2421 and from there on she grows up to 2425 where all the obscure questions of her thoughts have been explained she goes to have such a detailed investigation she will stand tomorrow against you at the judgment seat of christ the people of nineveh they will stand against you at the judgment seat of christ they repented including the animals without food and water for 3 days and lord repented of the things that could come upon them but if people are not having such repentance then how would you god how would you be a nation that guards the truth and the people are not able to realize what a wrath will be abiding upon you if you don't guard the word of lord god accurately and the people are not able to realize how many of the things that have been handed over for you have been counted as strange things as hosea chapter 8 verse number 12 emphasizes and he writes it long back he says rib riob many many great things and these things have been given not to return void unto the lord god as he said in isaiah 55 11 as the water cometh and the snow cometh and wets the soil and to accomplish its purpose so it is my word which i have sent it will come to accomplish it will not return unto me void but the lives of your people have not been knowing the word of lord god and you have made such void for your life the word of god and word of lord god is not void you have made for yourself the word of lord god to be null and void because you are not able to dig and take the lord's mind accurately neither there are such pastor teachers who can go back and dig and take and teach the word of lord god word by word line by line precept upon precept ayat upon ayat carrier upon carrier and the standards of what we can call line by line in the standards of bible doctrine where the church has to be eagerly enough to know the entire heritage of it and if people are not able to realize how much of your time is been absolutely wasted out how much of your time you're absolutely in the process of not learning the lord's mind you people are not able to realize that how much of your time you've lost and though so many great strange things so many great things have been given for us you consider it as a strange thing because you don't dig and take Though you have been given everything beyond your imagination in the Word of God, and that Word of God alone is enough to give you such sort of a great security in the Lord's mind, and yet you people are not able to realize what it is. So, dear brethren, he says over here, emphasizing that from being one, being supported. That's what, no matter what, may be the pressure upon your head. He says, you have a blood to say, come, let's go to join as disciples. We have a blood to say, come, let's grow up into grammatias, and therefore he's going to preserve you and he's going to give you peace, because your thought process is shalom, because you're going to. trust in the yehovah our lord of a god the word batak ends in verse number 3 again in verse number 4 of isaiah 26 he says batak batak in yehovah elohim not only now even and to future because that in yehovah elohim you have rock of strength or everlasting strength the word to sar meant to say what any pressure upon your head you can simply make it to be passed out do not fear for the things that are going to destroy your body he said but fear for those things which are going to destroy your soul you know you have nothing to lose when your soul and spirit has been intact in the lord's mind that's enough 
The flash it is dust, dust it will be returning back. The one who has given the soul and the spirit written back to God the Father. So he says, not fear. In me you have everlasting strength. Tusar Olam. He is the rock of strength. The word rock meant to say what? Any pressure that could come upon your head, Lord God the Father knows very well how to give you marvelous solutions for that. Solutions no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart has conceived or pursued. Such a marvelous solutions you're going to have. The solutions which are absolutely brilliant in the sight of Lord God the Father. You have such a great solutions for us. And yet people are not able to realize what are the solutions for us. Such a marvelous solutions for us. And yet, dear brethren, the rock of strength has been ignored because you are not able to put attack, we are not able to trust him. Because your soul or your body is not able to build up a wall of fortification for Bible doctrine. And the nations which are going to guard the word of Lord God, they enter in and they give the song. They say, Lord, the form being supported, the word Tusar Samak. That is, when we have pressure upon your head, O Lord, when we come back to the standards of knowing our true life, it has to be disciple oriented, grown up into grammatics in the presence of Lord God the Father. And that's what they're going to preserve. No matter what may be the pressure, O Lord, you have given us to preserve, you have given us to renovate our thinking. And what we're going to have, peace, peace. Not just once, twice, peace. The word says perfect peace, shalom, shalom. But in the Hebrew it says peace, peace. That in you we are trusting. And the duty of the pastor teacher is to make the congregation to trust into the word of Lord God. Even to the minute details of it. Even to the minute details. And that's not possible if you're not going to execute the passages. Forget it. That's not possible if you're not going to look the word of Lord God in dispensations. With proper study of categorical and exposition of the word of Lord God in the realm of isagogical background as well. And there also we can differentiate the pastors who have come for the belly and the pastors who have really come to serve the Lord God in spirit and in biblical truth. The people who come to serve for the belly, they don't go for exegesis. They're not into the serious business of Lord God. They're not involving their life into the Sharat responsibility of the Lord's mind. They're not able to look into that. If it is not a serious responsibility, then why are you making fun with the flock of Lord God? These people will stand, dear brother, and the people who are going to take in the word of Lord God and they would say, these words have actually worked out in our life because he says, the word of Lord God, what he has sent for the purpose, it will achieve it. It shall not return unto me void. And you have such a great defense over here. None of the defense systems on this world or which could come up in the master mind of engineering or sophisticated engineering, they cannot match to the defense. What you can find through the word of Lord God, perfect peace, nothing can shake it. Nothing can shake it. Nothing can come there. You have such a great peace. You have such a great standards over here to learn. Nothing can come. You have such a great things over here in the word of Lord God to be understood, to be making up your life. You have so many great things to realize and to understand what is the will of Lord God the Father in the standards. Nothing can come close for it. But how stupid you are not to let go to the word of God to be learned. Every day is a great privilege for us to learn the Lord's mind. Every day it's the highest privilege for us to know. Today if you have one more day, be thankful to Lord God the Father and say, Lord, I have been lacking in these areas. Teach me these things. Lord, I do not know. Teach me. As a duty of God the Father to send you those shepherds. Because Lord God the Father desires for you all to desire to the word of God. To send you for that. So dear brethren, he says, Form one being supported, Tusar Samak. 
It is not the word thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. The word should be stayed, being supported. And the one what it is, the one who is going to be all the time in pressure at what he looks he looks upon your way of life, the thinking of the Lord's mind way of life, not the thinking of man's way of life. These are the ones being supported, he says. So, dear brethren, he says, form one being supported. You shall preserve, not share. And then what does he go to give? Peace, peace. Because they put up attack, complete trust. And that trust is nothing but dear brethren. Your body and your soul will never be infected by any such sort of stupid things on this life where a man is thinking he's been infected and being admitted in the hospitals. You know, first what happens? His soul will look into the trembles of fears. His soul will look into the falling of eyes. That's what it happens every time. Trembling of the fears. Falling away of your eyes. Having the things pertaining to pain in your mind. Depressed mind should be the word. When you put attack, the trust with men to say, nothing will be there, nothing to worry, except only one thing, how the earth shall be filled with the glory of Lord God. How the Lord's word has to be reestablished back. How Lord God the Father would send his shepherds after his own heart who shall feed them with knowledge and with understanding. How they could be the real friends of God, the true friends of God. And in the process of becoming true friends of God, what are you going to become? You're going to think the terms of Bible doctrine, the thinking of Christ you have in you. That's what he goes and says in Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse number 3, I put to test. You're being taught by the Lord of a God, you will have peace. You'll have joy. When you have peace and joy, it's as good as to say, trust in the Lord God. But tag. That means you know nothing will happen to your body. Nothing will happen to your soul. You're going to build up such a wall of fortification, you fear nothing. Such a great thing you're going to have. You're going to fear nothing. You're going to fear anything in this life, in your soul as well as in your body. So dear brother, and he says in simple words, Trust, because the one being supported, the word Samak is the key over here. Samak in this verse em emphasizes that your blood should say for the pressure which has come upon your life, let's go to become grammateers. It's enough of the things what we have now. Oratory preaching we had, we had this stuff, we had that stuff. We have read the Bible as well. Now let's go to write the Bible and become a copy of writing the word of Lord God by a span of minimum, <coughs> if you can write, minimum. 10 to 12 verses a day, you can finish it up as early as possible by the span of three and a half years. Or 24 verses a day, three and a half years with exegesis study. Having to look upon the depth of the analysis of the word. You have a lot many things to communicate that time. You have a lot many things to learn that time. You have a lot many things to go and say to your pastor, we have so many things over here to learn when and how we're going to teach them. So let's start a Bible class every day, morning one hour, evening one hour. Come and teach the word of Lord God. We need to catch up and match up with the spirit of Apostle Paul, who taught five hours to eight hours a day at the place of Ephesus. And the people are thinking their ways, their thoughts. Not the ways of Lord God, not the thoughts of Lord God. Therefore, he says in Isaiah 55, my ways and my thoughts are higher than your ways and your thoughts. My thoughts are not like your thoughts. My ways are not like your ways. My thinking is absolutely different from your thinking. I have something great to learn and teach. But what is your way of thinking is all about? Earthly minded things. That's what you look. Earthly minded things. But the things and the teachings of Lord God are heavenly minded. Therefore, Lord God made man upright. But man cometh up with various schemes, various designs, various thought process. Which the word of Lord God says, it's not acceptable in the sight of Lord God at all. Not at all acceptable. 
So, dear brethren, he says that we have to put Batak trust, the trust of having your body and your soul not to be worried, because your body and soul has been taken up by the wall of fire. So how are we going to reach that? The process is only one thing, grow up into grammatias. No matter what may be the pressure, grow up into grammatias. No matter what may be the thinking, you want to say grow up into grammatias. That's the real life for us. That's the real standard of thinking for us. The great process of life which has been given for us says grow up into grammatias, joining as disciples. If that has not been done, Matthew 13, 52, what has been given for you in your lifetime, you will never understand. Get out from the stupid stuff what these people they are trying to teach in the oratory styles. Not just reading the Bible, but writing the Bible should be the scheme for you. To escape any sicknesses in your soul, your spirit and in your body. If that has not been done in the enlightenment period of this 21st century of the church age, again people will still go back. They're not going forward, they go backward. And as the time of the kings, as he said, in the book of Judges, in those days there was no king. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes, so shall be the people over here. The unseen king, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with the indwelling mentor, minister of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in the completed can of scripture, has lot many things for you all to teach, and yet you people are not able to learn about them. And they're worried about the unseen things. But the word of Lord God says, it is not about the unseen things that makes the difference. It is the things what you have been given for you to look. And when you learn, then you're going to learn much difference. You look upon the wall of fire which God the Father has inculcated for you. Such a great wall of fire which has been given for you. And then he says over here to emphasize, forever, for now and forever, in Yehi Elohim, or Yah Elohim, in Yehovah Elohim itself, he is the rock of ages, or the things pertaining to the strength of yawns. Any pressure may come upon your head, he would say, first fix your eyes upon discipleship program, make up your blood to be discipleship program. That's the first ultimate thing which you need to do. If you're not making up your life to be for discipleship program, then what happens? You look upon strange things. You consider the things for the valuable things of the word of Lord God as strange things. That's what we read in Hosea chapter 8 in verse number 12. You will not be taught by the Lord of a God, therefore there will be no peace. Though you may think you can have great peace, the word of Lord God says you will never have peace. So many great things what Lord God the Father has intended for us to be in this church age and yet many people are not able to realize nor learn about them. So he says, dear brethren, in Isaiah chapter 54 in verse number 13, the children shall be taught of the Lord God, Lamad, they shall have great peace of thy children. The word great peace again meant to say Rub, followed by the word Shalom, because Rub meant to say much. Their head and their body will be reflecting nothing but the word of Lord God. They have nothing else but to reflect the word of Lord God. So dear brethren, rub followed by the word shalom. And then in righteousness you shall be established. That's the first thing happens. And Lord God the Father looks upon those people who will have such sort of a righteous heart. Even in Proverbs chapter 11, when you look upon this discourse, particularly from verse number 17, he said, The merciful man, the shen-oriented man, doeth good to his own soul, but that he is a cruel, trouble at his own flesh, cruel in the one who is not able to become like a grammatious, by digging and taking the word of Lord God to the viewpoint of Bible doctrine. He is a cruel one. What does he do? He troubleth because his viewpoint of life is not grammatious. His thinking is not grammatious. So he troubleth his own flesh. That is the thought process to be in his head. And then the wicked worketh a deceitful work. The distorted thinking. The people who have left the correct path. These are the wicked. They say they are going to work a deceitful work. Because the thought process from the rising of the sun till the going of the sun are all meant to say false or untrue words which are called to deceive. 
So this is what he says, the false are untrue words which are meant to deceive. But to him that soweth righteousness, they shall be a sure reward. How are we going to sow to righteousness? He says, dear brethren, dig and take the word of Lord God in the viewpoint of Bible doctrine to be renovated in your head. Take word by word, dig and take, even in iota and carer of the Bible doctrine. These are the people who are going to sow righteousness. Such a great thing what you have. They're going to sow up in righteousness for the Lord God. So he says, dear brethren, dig and take into the standards of the viewpoint of Bible doctrine to be in your head. So he says, the people who are going to sow in righteousness, they shall surely get a great reward. The word reward over here meant to say about their brethren, it is called as seker. The word seker may be translated for higher or wages, but we know very well over here it emphasizes, under any pressure, their body will be grammatious and their thinking will be like a renovated standards of Bible doctrine. That's the word called to be seker. So dear brethren, he says, seker. But you know today what we are doing? The people are not able to have that secure standards of thinking. The rewards which we need to get in the viewpoint of Bible doctrine in Christ. We are not having the secure standards of life for us. And in every time you look, we are simply able to waste up our time in the stupidity of this earth. The pressure upon your head not to become like a grammatist, the pressure upon your head every time not to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine. Now if you look in verse 19, he says, Arise, righteousness tendeth to life, so he that pursueth evil pursueth to his own death. The word pursueth is nothing but a brother and the daff, which is nothing but their head, is not able to get every thought into the captivity of Christ. And when they have been put into opening up their mouth, they talk stupid things. And you can easily find out whether these people are mature in enough or not. Therefore, the same thing what we look over there, he says, let be far away from your trouble and to the sorrow. Come back to learn the word of Lord God, till all could come to the unity of the perfection of the knowledge of Christ, called to be catarismos, into the standards of what we can call as pleroma of Paltima privileges given to you, to the telelios perfection of Christ. That's what you have been called over here to be in the Lord, so that you can understand what is that great pursue which has been given for you so that you can become the standards of Lord God's pursuing of truth because people are happy to pursue after evil ra, ra, ah, distorted thinking in their head but the word of Lord God says it is not the evil because that evil will lead you to death so we are not here for evil he says but pursue after righteousness no matter what may be the pressure get every thought into captivity for Christ from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun. This is what you need to perceive. This is what you have been called to be in the presence of Lord God the Father. So he says, as righteousness tendeth to life, the true life, 2416 life, the Zoe concept of life. So, he that pursueth evil shall pursue to his own death. Now he says, they that are of a forward heart are abomination. Who is this forward heart? The people are called to be as the Hebrew word over here emphasizes ikesh, ikesh, I-Q-Q-E-S-H, distorted heart, perverse heart, twisted heart, crooked heart. What it is, the thought process from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun is distorted, is perverted. It is crooked. Crooked hearts, these are. So he says, dear brother, in simple words, the, the forward hearts are abomination to the Lord God. That is, they're going to be something like a disgusting thing. In everything you get to look upon, twisted things. Already we find in the church age, many, many twisted things being inculcated into your minds. If not, there would be only one regular rule for the church. And that rule is nothing but your brethren, exegesis, isagogics, and categories of the Lord's mind. And if you don't have that, you have gone forever. So, dear brethren, he says, it's an abomination, it's a disgusting thing for us. Because your viewpoint of life has not been associated with doctrine. 
So it always stays back like distorted thinking in your head. The great distorted thinking for you, it happens every time. Every time you come, it happens to be distorted thinking to happen in your mind. So dear brethren, he says, the twisted heart, the heart which is not for discipleship program, the heart which is not for the fear of Lord God, the heart which is not able to find the solution in the will of Lord God, he says, this is a distorted heart for me. And this is like an abomination to the Lord. But they that are upright, the word Thamiyamim again, meant to say the people are having authority upon their blood. Or to say in simple words, complete control over their blood. When blood is good, people are thinking all things will be healthy. And therefore they say, in the youth of the blood they can do many things. <laughs> but the people who are upright are the ones who are going to control the blood with authority of the word of God. They are the ones which they go in their way, the way of their act, the course of life, getting every thought to be renovated like a grammatical program in the presence of Lord God the Father. So these are the ones who are going to go in their way and these are the upright ones are a great rats on approval of Lord God the Father because they're going to have the approval of Lord God in their lifetime. You know why? The logic is very, very simple because he says these are the people who are upright. They have complete authority over the blood. These are the people who are going to be upright. And yet, dear brethren, you can find people are not able to look upon the standards to be as a righteous ones as we're able to look over here. Because he says in verse 21 of Proverbs 11, Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. But the seed of the righteous shall be tell you word. Though you may say we go to protect him, but the word of Lord God says the distorted thinking in their head, they shall be for sure punished. That meant to say what they shall be punished. They shall be not unpunished, meant to say they shall be punished. But the seed of the righteous, not only he, the person who lived a life like a righteous one, even their seed, he says, they shall be delivered. The word delivered over here is called your brethren as malath. The meaning of the word malath is nothing but their blood will be associated with the discipleship program so that their soul could be all the time in association of Bible doctrine alone. And we have such a great life for us to live on this earth. And that what man is doing today, considering the great many things of Bible doctrine to be strange. We have so many things to dig and learn. And that what the church is trying to do, still dob them with untempered mortar. It's a season of Christmas, talk about Christmas till the month of January or February. Afterwards, you have anyhow the season of uh, Easter, what you call resurrection. That's what Good Friday and Easter. And from there on, you will find the time till to the 40 days of Lent and all of the stupid stuff. Because every day the word of Lord God has to be taught, and they think Lent season is a good season for us to have every day the thought process. And they love to be in that 40 days, <laughs> Lent. Again, after that season, till to the month of November, <laughs> teach some stupid stuffs. You know, this is what we're able to find in certain of the villages where we go to look. What the pastors are doing, what the pastors are teaching to them in India. You can find them the way how these churches have been killing out without having the word of God. They love to talk all stupid things. And week by week they come, week by week they go. And they're so happy to inculcate all the stupid things, stupid stuff. And yet, dear brethren, People are not able to look. How many times you have been really out of the word of God. That which is yours, which belongs to you, that you have to take it up with authority in your life. 
And yet, God the Father says, perfect peace they have. This will be having joy. This will be having righteousness. And the Sanity says, the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. So, dear brethren, in this Deuteronomy chapter 13, in verse number 3, when he emphasizes what should be the life of us, he says in simple words that do not believe the things which these people are trying to teach. If he has said and it has come to pass and later on if you can look, he's diverting your life from the exact thought pattern of Bible doctrine exegesis, then don't believe him because Lord God the Father is putting you to test. The test of having pressure. But being taught by Lord God the Father, he will not have test. He would say he'll have peace. Being taught of Lord God, he will have great joy. And then furthermore, he emphasizes over here to say, to know whether you love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul, not just to love with your lips and your flesh. But it says to love the Lord our God with all of your heart, that is your body should be disciple oriented, with all of your soul, that is what in your vigor and valor your mouth should be associated to learn the thought process of Bible doctrine. So in your life, in your mind, in your process of everything, what it should be, it should be nothing but Bible doctrine. Therefore, he says, you shall walk, you shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and you shall serve him and cleave unto him. The Hebrew word, the back, that is your every thought process in your body from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun should be sticking together. That's the meaning of the word, the back. Your every thought in your body from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun should be one with the Lord God. That's called to be the back as you cleave to your own wife. After marriage, becoming one flesh. So he says in simple terms, the back. And what you have to the back, he says over here, first walk after the Lord God. Make up your discipleship program, joining as disciples, growing up into grammatics. That's what called to be halak. After the Lord your God and fear him. Yahweh, show the fear of Lord God in the midst of this people. And then he says, keep his commandments. Shamer, your thought process to be in the process of renovating head of Bible doctrine. Shamer, his commandments, the word called to be mitzvah, wherewith the judgments or the things pertaining to the great charge given to you under any pressure for you have to be associated with the doctrine. And then he says, Vobey, again the word Shamma, what you're going to do in the process of having a thought process to be in the viewpoint of Bible doctrine, so, so that you just don't hear, but you put them into action. So he says, Shamma, his voice, what is his voice? From the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, go and make disciples for my Lord, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, teaching to them all the things which have been given for you. So that's the voice. So he says, dear brethren, from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, you should be associated with the discipleship program. So he says, obey his voice. And then he says, serve him. Now it is not sharat, but the word meant to say yarabad, which is nothing but to be as a witness. Your viewpoint in your body to get every thought into captivity for Christ. So he says, serve him. And then he says the word cleave him, the back. <laughs> if at least you have done one thing in that, Walking after the Lord your God. You really might have had fear. In fear you would have kept the commandments of the Lord God. In obeying, in, in, in fear and, and fear of the commandments of the Lord God, you love to go to obey the fourth stage. You would love to obey his voice. And then you would love to serve him. The fifth stage and the sixth stage you would cleave unto him. You know, this is the very simple process of life which you are not able to make it up in this church age. Though much has been given for us and much has been expected from us. It's a very, very small, simple process of life. Walk in the commandments of the Lord God. Fear Him. Keep His commandments. Obey His voice. Serve Him. Cleave unto Him. The six steps for a man, number six, assigned on this earth. First, walking. Second, fear. Third, keep. Fourth, obey. Fifth, serve. Sixth, cleave. You know how simple it is. 
Therefore, when you're walking, make sure you're going to grow up into grammatics, joining as disciples in the Lord God. When you're fearing, make sure none of the iota care of the Bible has been left over. When you're keeping his commandments, make sure you passed on to the next generation the right teachings of the Lord's mind. When you're obeying his voice, make sure from the rising of the sun till to the going of the sun, go and make disciples of all the nations so that you are making to serve him as a witness. It is not sharat. It's the serious responsibility for the word sharat, but it is not sharat, but it's called to be abad. That means say what? You have to be a witness. The work to be performed for the gratitude which Lord God the Father has bestowed upon us in the viewpoint of life for your body to be the thought process to brought everything into captivity for Christ. So he says in simple terms, serve him and then what? Cleave the back. Make sure every thought in your body from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun is associated with Christ. You know, the way how to illustrate that if you are fully occupied with the one whom you love on this earth. You'll be constantly thinking what he or she pleases. That's what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 7. A unmarried man will think how to please God. A married man will think how to please a woman. You know, that's the meaning, the back. The biological urge is there, but we are looking upon the soul match first. All the time looking upon the mentality, how does he think? The volition, what does he love? The norms and standards, what does he want? You know, all these things of your soul which has to be matched. The thinking part, the volition part, the norms and standards part, the conscious part. All these things has to be matched. And if your people are not able to match over there, your physical intimacy is nothing. Dogs also can have better physical intimacy. It is the soul match that has to be. The facets of your soul, the mentality, the evolution, the emotion, the norms and standards and the consciousness. In the mentality, what he's been thinking, I have to change it. In his emotion, what does he love to have to appreciate in me, which he doesn't, which he hates, I shall let it go. The evolution, what he loves, the same thing what I do. The same thing between Christ and the church. The norms and standards, what he has set up in his life to be like a grammatist with the Lord God. And his consciousness, what does he love to have, be aware. Therefore he says in the consciousness, the back, the back, live unto Lord God. And people are not able to realize how much faithful my Lord, my God, my rock is for us. Because in him is a rock of ages. And people are still not able to read the word of God and find so that they could grow up to write the word of Lord God rather than ending up their life in trouble and in sorrow. On your trouble, after you die, sorrow. <laughs> Is that needed for you? The sixth step, what we have been told in Deuteronomy 13, 4, follow it up. Walk in the fear of Lord God. Second, tremble at his commandments. Third, obey and guard his commandments. Fourth, obey his voice. Fifth, serve him as a witness. And sixth, cleave unto him. When you do this, dear brethren, and Lord God the Father provokes you, and he examines your heart, soul, and mind, he will realize you are loving truth. That's what he says over here. In Deuteronomy chapter 13, in verse number 3, Hakan, particularly in Isaiah chapter 8, in verse number 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, because there is no light in them, therefore seal them to, to be the testimony for me as disciples in the Lord God, as Matthias in the Lord God. And we look upon in Acts chapter 17, verse number 11, for the people of Thessalonica, they were more noble. That is what they were in the standards of eugenes. What it is, they were in the standards of becoming a high rank of a birth for learning and knowing word of God. In that they received the word of Lord God with all readiness of the mind and searched the scriptures daily. Again, you find the word daily, whether those things were so or not. In Ephesians 4.14, it says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. The word children is called to be nepia, so still like an infant child who is sucking the milk. So he says, we are not to be like an infant child, but 
tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sleight of man or the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Therefore he says in 1 John 4, 1, Since you have been given the Spirit of Lord God the Father and heaven to be indwelling in you, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. But rather, what is the work? He says, prove them. God the Father wants to look upon you up to what extent you could be really worth for his glory. Therefore, he says in Matthew 24, 24, For they shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, ain't so much that if they were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. The same thing in First Corinthians chapter 11 in verse 19 he says, For they must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. The same thing in Second Thessalonians 2 11 he says, And for this cause God shall send them unto strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Why? Because they are not able to grow up into grammar tears. That's why. He furthermore says in First John 2 19, They went out from us, but they were not of us. If or if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be manifest, made manifest that they were not at all of us. The same thing in 1 John 4, 4 he says, You are of sons, you are of God, little children, again the word technon, and have overcome the overcome them because greater is he that is in you than the one who is in this world. So, dear brethren, the great things what we have is nothing but to be careful about the deception of Satan because the Satan goes to deceive them that dwell on the earth, he says in Revelation 13, 14, by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. That is what by a sword and did live is nothing but dear brethren, the standards of the word of Lord God which has crushed its head, yet by the power of the tail it is able to live, destroying many people not able to learn the word of Lord God. So dear brethren, the duty of us is to love the Lord of God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our strength. The same thing what he says in Second Corinthians 8, 8, I speak not by the commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others, and to prove the sincerity of your love. So dear brethren, how many days more? You still want to be far away from the number of six categories given for us in Deuteronomy chapter 13 in verse number 4. You shall not let go even a single iota and carrera. Tomorrow we have to gather in the word of Lord God to be eternal treasure. People may look upon the terms of this earth to be treasured. But we look in the terms of the heaven. Matthew 6.33 as he also said treasure up, your heaven, tre treasure up your treasures in the heaven where there are no robbers nor moth which can eat neither they can be thefted. So which way you want to go dear brother and you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of his glory in his matchless marvelous infinite divine glorious grace. So with the head born eyes closed the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ without hope and without eternal life Inaudible telling to Lord God the Father with the prayers of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moon itself. We shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for so very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the grace man to grow up in grace, knowledge of Bible doctrine, where with you shall learn to acquire to possess, know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the grace man to carry so thorn logan, herald the word in season out of sin, because the diamond from my witnesses, where it have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in Bell Trinity, for the Bible in our hands, and number two diamond from my witnesses are hearers. If they know here, us, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host of witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So, which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue as Lord God the Holy Ghost would lead us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. Infinitely divine Holy Father, being grateful and thankful for this privilege, O Lord, to redeem the time in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit that are given to learn these things, which have been very, very essential for us in the time of the present Christendom, where many pastor teachers have failed to expound the scriptures of you with proper exegesis, isagogics, and categories. At O Lord, it your divine grace which have been bestowed upon us so that our service could be acceptable in the sight, and that which could be God-fearing, you have given us this privilege to understand your word and to read and to analyze the things pertaining to your glory. At the same time, O Lord, we come unto the throne of grace to humble Humbly request upon us that grace which has been needed to educate these people so that the earth could be filled with the marvelous wonders of your glory. Besides fearing not for anything else, because we have put our trust upon thee, we have been taken up to 
take care completely our soul and spirit and our body so that there is nothing that could come against us the wall of fire which are put upon us it would always protect us to do your work as you said in Isaiah chapter 26 in verse number 3 and 4 so father help us to be as the one could be righteous for your truth and help us to shine shine forth as light luminaries in the midst of such powers and crooked nation generations in not letting go even a single iota and carrera but standing as a witness for you as a lamb that could shine forth for the praise of your glory on this earth and in all these things O oh lord it's your grace and your matchless grace which are bestowed upon us to learn your word and to be your word so that father in each and everything they could shine and look upon your standards of your will rather than looking upon our mentality of stupidity and reflecting nothing but ignorance but lord we want we through you to reflect your cognizance of Bible doctrine to be taught to this people for day by day inculcation of Bible doctrine like the people of the crowd in Thessalonica of Acts chapter 17. So Father being grateful and thankful for this privilege we pray the mentoring minister of Lord God the Holy Ghost to enlighten to challenge and to bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask Sovereign Lord. Amen.